the book that we're going to read, Flora and Ulysses. The, the full title is The Illuminated Adventures of Flora and Ulysses, and it's by Kate DiCamillo. And as you can see, it has a medal on the cover because it is a John Newberry Medal Award winner. So that means that the, the year that this book was published, it was considered the best book of that year. So that's a pretty big honor. Uh, I'm going to read this book to you. For Ulysses, The Illuminated Adventures. And we'll read a little bit each night. In the Tickham kitchen, late on a summer afternoon. <clears throat> Mr. Tickham is trying to get Mrs. Tickham's attention, I think. Happy birthday to you. What's this, Donald? This is your birthday present. It is a Ulysses Super Suction Multi-Terrain 2000X. Happy birthday. It's a vacuum cleaner. It's a Ulysses 2000X. Yep, it's the crown jewel of vacuums. It features an extra long cord so that absolutely no mess, no dirt is ever out of your reach. It's indoor, outdoor. It goes everywhere. It does everything. Goody. You, you, you have to try it out. Turn it on. For heaven's sake, Donald. Please? Oh my! Whoa! Hey now! Oh my, it took his pants off! <laughs> He's getting the poetry book and a box of crackers? Oh my. What in the world, Donald? It's multi-terrain! You should try it outside! And that's how it all began. With a vacuum cleaner. Really? Chapter 1. A Natural Born Cynic Florabelle Buckman was in her room at her desk. She was very busy. She was doing two things at once. She was ignoring her mother, and she was also reading a comic book entitled The Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incandesto. Flora! her mother shouted. What are you doing up there? I'm reading! Flora shouted back. Remember the contract, her mother shouted. Don't forget, do not forget the contract. At the beginning of summer, in a moment of weakness, Flora had made the mistake of signing a contract that said she would work to turn her face away from the idiotic hijinks of comics and toward the bright light of true literature. Those were the exact words of the contract. They were her mother's words. Flora's mother was a writer. She was divorced and sh she wrote romance novels. Talk about idiotic hijinks. Flora hated romance novels. In fact, she hated romance. I hate romance, said Flora out loud to herself. She liked the way the words sounded. She imagined them floating above her in a comic strip bubble. It was a comforting thing to have words hanging over her head, especially negative words about romance. I hate romance. Flora's mother had often accused Flora of being a natural-born cynic. Flora suspected that this was true. She was a natural-born cynic who lived in defiance of contracts. Yep, thought Flora, that's me. She bent her head and went back to reading about the amazing incandesto. She was interrupted a few minutes later by a very loud by a very loud noise. It sounded as if a jet plane had landed in the Tickham's backyard. What the heck? said Flora. She got up from her desk and looked out the window and saw Mrs. Tickham running around the backyard with a shiny oversized vacuum cleaner it looked like she was vacuuming the yard that can't be thought flora who vacuums their yard actually it didn't look like mrs tickham knew what she was doing 
It was more like the vacuum cleaner was in charge. And the vacuum cleaner seemed to be out of its mind. Or its engine. Or something. A few bolts shy of a load, said Flora out loud. And then she saw that Mrs. Tickum and the vacuum cleaner were headed directly for a squirrel. Hey now, said Flora. She banged on the window. Watch out, she shouted. You're, you're going to vacuum up that squirrel. She said the words, and then she had a strange moment of seeing them hanging there over her head. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. There is just no predicting what kind of sentences you might say, thought Flora. For instance, who would ever think you would shout, you're going to vacuum up that squirrel? It didn't make any difference, though. What words she said, Flora was too far away. The vacuum cleaner was too loud. And also, clearly, it was bent on destruction. This malfeasance must be stopped, said Flora in a deep and superheroic voice. This malfeasance must be stopped, was what the unassuming janitor, Alfred T. Slipper, always said before he was transformed into the amazing incandesto and became a towering, crime-fighting pillar of light. Unfortunately, Alfred T. Slipper wasn't present. Oh, my word. Well, I look forward to seeing what happens in the next chapter. Stay tuned.